Thank you, sir. I'd like to say good evening, board, and as well as everybody who is with us here at the Fannin County Performing Arts Center, as well as those folks that are watching us online on Dragon TV. Good evening to all of you as well. At this time for agenda item number two will be our invocation, and I'm going to ask Keith Knuckles to come to the podium. If everybody will please rise. Let's bow heads and go to God in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you and we want to share in your praise and in your worship to give you all the honor and the glory to lift your name and God just to, to serve you, to be like your son did to us. God, we praise you for that. Teach us, give us patience, give us wisdom, give us direction to these that will make decisions and those that have made decisions tonight. I pray, Father, that you will bless what we've done and what we're doing in the future. May we continually Look to the good of this community and the children. And I pray, Lord, that we can serve not just them, but serve each other and especially serve you. So all that's taken and done tonight, we ask that you bless it. In the name of your Son, Jesus, all God's people said, Amen. Thank you, Mr. Knuckles. And at this time, we're going to ask Fannin County Sheriff's Deputy and SRO Jim Burrell to come to the podium and lead us in the pledge to the flag. The American flag is on the left side of the stage. Deputy Burrell. Stand, salute, pledge. I pledge I allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Deputy Burrell. Item number four, Mr. Chair, is to approve the consent agenda, and there's two parts to this. The first is A, to approve the agenda for tonight itself, and then B is to approve the minutes. And we have those minutes posted up here, and Ms. Wings is going to open those up. And these are the minutes from the February 11th, 2021 regular meeting of the Board of Education, 6 p.m., and Ms. Wings will scroll through those at this time. items on the consent agenda as presented. Chair seeking a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Okay, thank you. For the next item, uh, Mr. Chair, I'm going to ask you to join me right here in the in the front center. And uh, Mr. Banner, if I can get you to dim the projector, please. And ladies and gentlemen, this is next week in the state of Georgia is Board Appreciation Week. And so if you look around and you can see that the schools have prepared things for our board members in appreciation. And at this time, I'm going to call each board member up to the front and we're going to line up across the front and we will take a photograph for this. And so Mr. Gallo is going to help me with certificates. And the first board member that I'm going to ask to come up to the front, and we're going in order of seniority as a boardsman. So this is Mr. Lewis Dewey's. And Mr. Dewey's came on the board. January 1st, 1989 to December 31st, 2004. And then he came off the board until 2009. Uh, and he will be on the board through 2024. And so we want to say thank you to Mr. Deweese. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give him a round of applause. Our next Board of Education member is Mr. Bobby Bearden, who came on the board in January of 2003, and he will serve through Jan or December 31st, 2022. So let's give Mr. Bearden a round of applause. <laughs> Our next Board of Education member began in January of 2005 and will serve through December 31st, 2024, Mr. Terry Bramlin. Board of Education member came on in January 1st, 2019, and he will serve through December 31st, 2022. Mr. Mike Cole, give him a round of applause. For you. And finally, the chairman of the Fannin County Board of Education came on January 1st, 2017, and he will serve through December 31st, 2024. This is Mr. Chad Galloway. So, ladies and gentlemen, they're lined up. Let's take a photograph.
We are so thankful for this Board of Education right here. Let's give them one more round of applause for their service to family family. Thank you, Board. Mr. Chair, our next item on the agenda is a school governance team update. And I'm going to ask Assistant Superintendent Sarah Regan if she'll come to the podium and give us a, a quick update. And Mr. Banner, we need to return the projector to the service. Ms. Finley's got it. Good evening, Board. I'm excited tonight to stand before you and give you a school governance team update. School governance teams, of course, uh, meet throughout the school year on the campus of the school uh, of which they're serving. So this is what is going on in school governance teams through the month of February. At East Fannin, uh, they did meet on, uh, let's see, it was February 3rd. Um, Mrs. Welch presented some information to the team about the gifted education program. Ms. Carter, their academic coach, also presented some data to the team. And Mr. Price reviewed, uh, reviewed the progress on their school improvement team, um, their school improvement plan, I'm sorry. West, their meeting got canceled. It happened to be a poor weather, uh, weather day, and so they did not leave. February 17th, there were actually two meetings that day. We began the day at Fannin Middle School. Uh, on that day and end of the day at the high school, both teams did uh, do some reviewing at school improvement goals, reviewed some on their uh, COVID protocols, also discussed the fact that we had to suspend uh, professional learning for the year because of not having enough substitutes. Um, if you'll scroll down, Mr. Inslee, please. Uh, the last meeting at the bottom should be um, Blue Ridge Elementary, their, uh, their team. One more. There we go. Blue Ridge did meet on February 23rd where uh, Dr. Hodges reviewed their school improvement plan and also gave them an update about the student performance on the benchmarks. So that's what the teams were doing in the month of February. If anyone has any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Regan. Our next item on the agenda board is number seven, school happenings. And filling in for Dr. Hodges this evening is Blue Ridge Elementary School Assistant Principal. Jenny Tipton. Jenny, uh, welcome to the board meeting, and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you. Good evening, board. It is my honor to represent Dr. Hodges. She misses being here with y'all tonight, um, but I love um, getting the opportunity to share what's going on at Blue Ridge Elementary School, where we are better together and we are better strong. We invited um, six new faculty since five months ago when Dr. Hodges shared with y'all last. Uh, Ms. Gretchen Gordon joined us as a kindergarten teacher and has done an excellent job. Ms. Taylor Ledford has been with us all year, but moved into an um, official teaching position from a long-term sub this new year as well, and she's doing great. Ms. Donna Yates has joined us as a paraprofessional helping out in fourth grade, and everybody loves her. She's the hardest worker. And Mr. Tyler Messer has also been with us all year, but transitioned from a long-term sub to a paraprofessional. And he is loved by all and does a great job. Ms. Amanda Galloway joined us just recently on our third grade team and has just been a valuable uh, member of our team and just jumped right in and we are grateful for her. And Ms. Jillian Breeden has come to be our student information specialist since Ms. Lisa Jackson moved to the board office um, or the high school for the central registrar. So all of these have um, just joined us and become part of the Blue Ridge Elementary family and we are so grateful for them. Okay. Don't miss out on something great just because it could also be difficult. This year has presented challenges with COVID, teaching in a pandemic, and just the stipulations, but we have chosen and our staff have chosen to not let our students' learning and experiences um, miss out because it's difficult. So our teachers and our whole school has made sure that our students have learned and experienced great things. So PBIS has been um, just rolling along with a few tweaks. We get to still celebrate positive behavior. We noticed that um, most of the students that came to the office were negative behavior, and we wanted a way to shout out and celebrate those that didn't always get recognized, but they were doing such a great job. And so that's one of my favorite things that we get to do. Most people don't like a phone call from me um, because it usually means that um, their child's in trouble. But when I get to call for these, they, their tone changes and they get to, the kids get to talk on the phone and it's a really awesome time. They get to sign our wall. Our staff celebrations have changed a little bit. We've had to go away from buffets and potlucks and so our local restaurants have helped by sending and working with us for um, 
these like bag lunches and different ways, and so our staff have appreciated that. Our reward days for those students who earn dojo points look a little different. Where we used to mix and mingle, we're having to think of different ways um, to celebrate those positive behaviors, but our PBI, PBIS team has done an excellent job. And in the right hand corner, sorry, um, our parent liaison led last week during parent-teacher conferences an, encouraging, an encouragement to our staff to uh, reach out to celebrate student behaviors, to contact parents with positive things. And um, on the early release day, we got to go over there and come and draw teachers' names and celebrate them. So that was a great way to encourage parent contacts. STEAM is alive and well, from our media center to robotics in the corner to classroom happenings where students have upcycled old Christmas gingerbread houses into bird feeders to building an Eiffel Tower as tall as they can out of a few pieces of newspaper to bridges. Um, our STEAM program is doing great. They, students have built kaleidoscopes. Every student got to take one home as they learned about reflection and light. Um, our chickens are just thriving. Our students have learned to make fodder and hand it to them. We couldn't do that without MDC and their support, so we thank you very much. Um, our Bears Farm and Arts students are collecting the eggs and um, we're able to sell them in our little market. And that's what the students are doing, recycling egg curtains. Um, Miss Lucy in the middle, our teachers have even done at-home steam projects and challenges with the cold days. And um, she made an awesome sled on one of our snow days. Our each grade level has also chosen a project and third grade has done a coat can heater um, that will hopefully partner with fifth grade to make a little fan to help heat our aquaponic system. And a shout out to Ace Hardware for their help um, in teaching our students how to build the um, wood frame and that he also helped with um, the, the kaleidoscopes and parts for that. So we couldn't do STEAM without our community partners, so we're grateful for them. Our pre-K is a happening place. If you've never been in a pre-K classroom, that's a good place to go cheer you up. But from learning um, print to the middle picture, they measured out how big a dinosaur was. Um, and so they got to see the magnitude of that. And so they just explore their world. Um, they're just a happy little bunch. And so they're a bright, shining spot in the bridge. More cool happenings, we celebrated National Read Aloud Day reading in different classrooms. Mr. Mark Taylor came to speak to fourth grade. He's a storm chaser. And um, even David Chanley um, gave a shout out to Blue Ridge Elementary, which our kids thought was really awesome. We were thankful for an in-person spelling bee here and proud of um, Ethan Lindsay for representing Blue Ridge Elementary. The FCMS and Kinder Partnership, um, the FCMS students designed and printed 3D uh, models of cookie cutters and sent them to our kids for Valentine's Day and they got to experience shapes and stuff. So that was really cool to see what our uh, middle schoolers could do and the way that they shared with our kids and they loved it. And finally, our teachers, since we haven't been able to leave the building, um, have found ways to make virtual field trips and live field trips and our third graders got to visit a dairy farm one day. So that was awesome. And finally, White Christmas is something that the elementary schools celebrate every year and that was not possible this year. So we wanted to find a way to spread Christmas cheer in a different way. Um, our each grade level adopted a local community charity and our families and students rallied around each other and gathered items for um, a long list on the next slide. Um, the Animal Shelter Homeward Bound, Mineral Springs Center, Pruitt Health Nursing Home, Blue Ridge Assisted Living and Memory Care Center, Feed Fannin, Open Arms, and the Craddock Center. And we just thought it was an awesome way to teach giving and not just teach our students to be good learners and knowledgeable, but also good citizens and just good little humans. And um, I hope that that's something that we'll continue to do in the future, um, just to teach them about caring about our community. All of these things that go on at Blue Ridge Elementary couldn't go on without the help of you and your leadership for our school. So we thank each and every one of you for all that you do for our school and our school system. Thank you. All right, thank you, Ms. Tipton. Board, do you have any questions for Ms. Tipton? Comments? Okay, thank you, and thank you so much. Our next item on the agenda is the district health update, and we're gonna ask Mr. Roof, can you join us at the podium, please? Good evening, board. 
again, Dr. Barney, I don't think it's fair that I have to follow the, the school happenings and what a great job. That was really phenomenal. Uh, all the great things that are going on with Blue Ridge. Um, so, you know, right now, kind of looking at, see me looking at my uh, notes here. We are in a situation right now, if you look at our hospital, talking with, uh, with Jason Jones over at the hospital, um, positive cases of COVID have, have decreased significantly. Uh, they're seeing between one to two inpatients on average, um, whereas during the uh, times of uh, most stressful spread, uh, they were seeing as many you know, as 15 to 17. Um, so that's a pretty significant decrease. Uh, you know, due to the to the vaccine rollout and to the just the natural the natural flow of the of the uh, uh, disease in general. So, you know, we're we're in a, we're in a spot where we're seeing decrease. Uh, we we see hope, and our our school system number numbers show that as well. And then Ms., Mr. Inslee is showing a graph right now from uh, uh, the Weather Channel Weather.com that shows the community spread and how. You know the community cases, and you can see that that big spike there in January, and and at that, and then since then, of course, it's continued to uh, to go down to to diminish, and and so you know we're we feel like we're uh, we hopefully can see the light at the end of the tunnel, but we're not out of it yet. Um, think about where we were last year. Though. Uh, at the March meeting last year, Dr. Watton, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that was the meeting where. We, we basically had to come to the conclusion that we were going to have to uh, not come to school. Um, right. And one now, year ago we were at the central office, mm -hmm. and that was our that, our last meeting since at the central office was the March meeting of 2020, and uh, we made the announcement then that during that meeting uh, that we would be closing school. In effect, tomorrow. One year ago, we and now our last day of school during the last school year. And now, what's happening tomorrow? Like, what's happening really tomorrow? And tomorrow, we're going to offer all personnel who want the opportunity to be vaccinated the chance to do so at the agriculture center. So it's amazing to think about what's been accomplished just in the world and in society and science in the past year. And we'll have the opportunity going from where we were really not knowing what was coming to being at a point where we're able to offer the opportunity for personnel to be vaccinated one year later. We're thankful for that, we are blessed. So we are, and we, we're continuing again to, to take all the safety precautions that we can and continue uh, uh, good public health practices. And, you know, I just want to, looking at that from last year to this year, I just want to say thank you to all of our school nurses and uh, all of our personnel uh, throughout our schools for, for everything that they've done to, to be able to get from last year to this year. Uh, we wouldn't be able, to, I wouldn't be able to stand here and um, and, and feel like, you know, we, we we were able to make it this far without everybody pitching in and all the teamwork that took place. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roof. Well done. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. Roof from his data or the presentation? Thank you, sir. Next item up is the central office update. This month it is curriculum update, and we're going to welcome Ms. Rubin back to the podium. Ms. Rubin. Thank you. Good evening again. So I have a little bit of a curriculum update that I would like to share with you. Let's see. Okay, so let's talk about what's going on right now, because we're in spring 2021, and this is an exciting time of year for us as we begin looking forward into the next school year. So right now we've got school and district improvement teams that are leading, as well as leadership teams, to uh, begin the comprehensive needs assessment process. By identifying what our needs are, then we're able to create our goals and our action steps for the next school year. So school improvement plans are being submitted to the district by May 26th, which is the end of post planning. And those uh, improvement plans will be uh, reviewed and then approved. And then the goals for the schools will be used to help create the district improvement plan. Uh, we have to submit our district improvement plan to the Georgia Department of Education on or before July 31st, 2021. And once we submit that approved and have an approved plan, that's when our district will be awarded all of the federal budgets and federal funds for FY22. Ah, and this is why I wore my readers. 
Okay, so let's take a look about what we can expect when the next school year uh, resumes. When we come back in 2021, the FCSS will return to 100% face-to-face instruction in kindergarten through eighth grade this next school year. We will not offer online learning for elementary or middle school students once this school year ends. Remember, OLL was only available in kindergarten through eighth grade as a response to the pandemic. We are looking forward to returning to 100% face-to-face instruction in kindergarten through eighth grade. Now, at the high school level, the high school will not be offering voluntary online learning for students in SY 21-22. However, the high school will continue to offer credit recovery, as they do now, and also, some students will be enrolled in computer-based computer courses, but those assignments will be based on what students need to complete in order to graduate. Students who are online learners in 2021 will return to face-to-face -face instruction. The FCSS will continue to offer hospital homebound services for students who are ill, injured, or have a qualifying medical need. Hospital homebound is not the same program as online learning. We went twice. <laughs> okay, other significant changes for 21-22. In 21-22, the FCSS will move to virtual learning days as opposed to cold learning days. As you'll recall, cold was implemented last school year as an experiment to minimize learning time lost due to inclement weather or other issues which required a school closure. Since the cold inception, we've weathered a total school shutdown from March to May of 2020, and we've also managed almost a full year now of offering families a choice between face-to-face -face instruction or online learning. It would be an understatement to say that we've come a long way. So beginning next school year, parents and employees can expect that every instructional day on the school calendar will be a school day. We will not necessarily exhaust the traditional four days of forgiveness the way we did with those cold days. So next year, we will implement one-to-one -one devices in third through fifth grades, in addition to continuing our one-to-one -one initiative in sixth through twelfth grades. On days where we must cancel regular school, a virtual learning day will be implemented. Speaking of the changes with virtual learning, in 21-22, in grades 3 through 12, we will move from mostly asynchronous, pre-planned, cold lessons into synchronous instruction. So you may be thinking, what does she mean? Well, here is the difference between asynchronous and synchronous. Asynchronous learning means that the teacher and the students are not really interacting. Synchronous is simply that they are interacting with each other and the lessons are continuing. So if we were in school on Tuesday and on Wednesday it was a virtual day, those students would begin with the, the same lesson, the same lesson stream as they began the day before. And so we are extremely excited to be making this move from having those lessons that are pre-planned to actually continuing the lessons as they were planned and our teachers and students meeting online to complete those lessons. That will be awesome. In addition to providing devices to students in 3 through 12, the FCSS will continue to offer Wi-Fi assistance during 21-22 for families who do not have Wi-Fi in their homes using our CARES Act funds. Parents can contact their child's school for more information about the service, which is already available. Virtual learning days, lessons, and assignments are always due three days after we return to school. So if your home loses internet, electricity, or other issues happen, such as your child being ill, your child will not be penalized. There will be time for them to make up their lessons. So does anyone have any questions about things in curriculum uh, coming up for next school year? Okay, thank you. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to next school year. And the next one is actually yours, Ms. Wigan, uh, as well as Ms. Wynn. And I think Ms. Stoss is, is here also ready to help us. So this agenda item number 10, to approve disbursement of special funds from governor for all personnel. So uh, Ms. 
Regan and Ms. Wynn are going to present a request to utilize special use funds from Governor County to pay school personnel what he is calling a retention bonus and to also use locally received federal CARES Act funds to pay the same to other county county school system personnel who may otherwise be excluded from the governor's initiative. So we'll turn the floor back over to you, Ms. Regan. Thank you, Dr. Guatney. So in this memo, we would like to present uh, to you for your consideration a request to pay the $1,000 retention bonus for Georgia teachers and school-based staff accounts received from Governor Kemp and the Georgia Department of Education. You probably have heard about this on the news fairly recently that the state of Georgia was going to use some of their reserve funds from the state level CARES budget to pay this uh, particular retention bonus. So the bonus is being provided to all K-12 public school teachers and staff to support stronger recruitment and retention of teachers and school level staff and as a gesture of gratitude for their work and sacrifices during the COVID-19 pandemic. So the bonus payments are intended for all school level staff in Georgia's public schools, including but not limited to teachers, paraprofessionals, school counselors, school psychologists, school nurses, custodians, bus drivers, school nutrition staff, media specialists, clerical staff, and administrative assistants, school principals, assistant principals, instructional coaches, and therapists. That's a pretty long list. It's very exciting. A specific listing of the eligible job codes, codes will be provided to us once we receive these funds. The funds have not been received yet. We would also like to request the approval to pay the $1,000 retention bonus to other benefits eligible district employees who are current employees of the FCSS at the time that the checks are issued and that are not otherwise included among the employees funded by Governor Kemp. Payments to those employees not included among those listed from the state will be made in the same manner as prescribed by other guidance from the governor and the Georgia Department of Education for those covered employees. The intention is to include all benefits eligible district employees and not to exceed 100% of the amount from the state. Regularly employed part-time district employees who work 49% or greater will be funded in a similar manner as school employees receiving payment prescribed by the state. We would use our ESSER II CRRSA Act LEA funds to make these additional payments to augment and make whole what is provided by the state. Okay, so this money hasn't been approved yet from uh, the, the state to be dispersed to us, so we are asking for this at this time to be prepared to provide that money to employees as soon as we are given the green light to do so. Now, Ms. Regan, the, the number two item here, there is guidance that is out from the state at this time that the district may, following rules prescribed by the state, augment and make whole this funds to district personnel that the governor did not include, correct? That is correct. Okay, so we're following their prescribed guidance, basically, and, and we'll administer this precisely as prescribed by the state to all employees who are eligible under his terms, and then those employees that were, were not included, we're asking the Fannie County Board of Education to pay using the federal funds that are already assigned to us. And Ms. Regan, you have uh, gone in and, and submitted actually a federal application to the state to use those funds for that purpose once this is approved, correct? That is correct. And Our that was approved? was approved this past week, that is correct. Okay, all right, so board, are there any questions about this? No question, but thank you for doing the prior meeting with all of you. Yes, sir, and I, I respect that about this board wanting to, you know, I respect that Governor Kemp is, is providing this for school personnel. Uh, I further respect that the Board of Education realizes that to get the job done, it takes every single employee, whether they're assigned to a school or not. And so by providing this to everybody, you know, I think it's a good thing. Uh, any other questions or feedback? Okay, so for item number 10, I recommend to approve the use of these funds to disperse as prescribed. Mr. Chair. Can the Chair have that motion? So moved. Second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. The next item, item number 11, Federal CARES Act funds uh, is something that, uh, this has just been a really difficult year 
to say the least. And I know that this Board of Education wants to do whatever it can to help employees. And, um, and one of these is that uh, we can actually use our own federal allocation to help our employees. So Ms. Wayne, you wanna talk a little bit about this memo right here? Yes, sir. We request board approval to use our federal funds for a local retention bonus for FY22. And per the implementation guide plan for the ESSER 2 CRRS Act, it states and guides how local educational agencies can use those funds. And under that guide, under continuing of core staff and services, we request your approval to use the federal funds to cover the cost of bonuses, bonuses for retaining educators and support personnel who are both currently employed during the FY 2022 school year and returning to us in the 21 and 22 school year. And those federal funds would be applied to pay a $2,000 local retention bonus from the Esther CARES Act funds to all benefit eligible personnel who are current employees of the Fayette County School System that have signed a next year contract for the FY22 school year. The payment's based on employment at 100% and will be reduced based on their FY22 percentage of employment. We also request a $2,000 local retention bonus that will apply to all current classified benefit eligible employees. So this is including all bus drivers, school nutrition employees, paraprofessional secretaries, tech, every classified benefit eligible employee who signs a special classified letter of intent to return to work for the FY22 school year. And that payment will be based at 100% and will be reduced based on their percentage of employment. We also want to apply this to previously retired 49% employees returning for the FY22 year at 49%, so they have 49% of that retention bonus. There would be no overtime, extended day, extended year, or other employment basis other above 100% factored into the local retention bonus. And approval is requested to cover the Social Security Medicare portion of the retention bonus so that all employees receive a gross amount of $2,165.67. And this bonus is subject to taxes, but it's not eligible for TRS or PSERS. Substitutes and contractors will not be eligible for the local retention bonus. And the local retention bonus payment will be made to employees only after receiving their signed professional employment contract or their signed classified letter of intent for FY22. And the payment will be made between June 15th, 2021 and June 30th, 2021. Okay, thank you. And uh, I'll ask Ms. Doss if she'll help with the explanation of this, but, uh, but basically in consultation with legal counsel, including Ms. Doss, as well as the district attorney, one thing that we need to be mindful of is the gratuities clause in the Georgia Constitution. And so in looking at the timing of this, this is eligible in order to not have an issue with gratuities clause. This is for personnel who are currently employed who then commit to come back to us next year. And the cutoff for that commitment on contracts for teachers is June 15th, so payments would be issued after that, Ms. Doss. Well, that, as we have talked about all day, you know, a year ago, what, what a difference in our lives. And the pandemic has made things, we've done things that we never thought we would do. We've uh, been forced to endure things that we never contemplated. And so our school system has led the way in what can we do to service our students. Uh, if y'all remember the end of last year when we talked about the number of meals that had been delivered, the extraordinary measures that were taken to make sure that we not only nurtured our children educationally, but physically. and None of that could have happened without every single employee that we have. Um, so it's amazing that this board, it, it's just indicative of who you are as a board that recognizes that it takes everybody. That being said, the world is full of lawyers. And lawyers, you know, we have rules. And then if there's a rule, well then how can we break this rule? Or what is an exception to this rule? And one of the things is that the state US, the Georgia Constitution has the gratuities clause that says you can't make a gift of federal, I mean, of, of taxpayers' money. Um, but 
there's exception to that. And one of them is that you can have what in any other my world, y'all's day-to-day job world, a retention bonus or a hiring bonus. And so we have worked with our district attorney's office. We have consulted with uh, who we consider the school board's, the school board attorneys, school board attorneys. And we've talked to uh, folks down under the Gold Dome. And so CARES Act money comes to us from the federal government. There's only certain things that we can do with it. But one of the things that we can do with it is uh, provide a retention bonus because we, it's been a heck of a year. I mean, we could use a bad word. It's really been a bad year. But our teachers have gone above and beyond. And so we have cleared it with everybody that needs to be cleared with to say that, you know, if you're willing to come back and try us again, heaven knows what next year will be, but if you're willing to come back, we're will, we want to say thank you. And, you know, We've got rules and regulations that we operate under. We all know that there was an administration change in January. Last year, we got certain days that we could extend to teachers or uh, personnel that had to be out for COVID. And let's face it, we have people that come to school every day who are sick. We have teachers, staff that are fighting cancer, who have loved ones that are filing fighting disease, but they have to be there. But then we had this edict that came down from on high that said if you've done X, Y, or Z, then you can't be on our campus. But federal government then said, we will allow extra days for you to be out. That wasn't extended in a new administration. We don't know what benefits may or may not um, come down from on high. We have to follow federal rules in order to get federal funding. So if there's any additional funding that comes down, if there's any additional rules that come down, then um, I know that this board will work retroactively to extend all of those benefits to every single person that might be eligible for. Because just like this, we want to legally find a way to do everything that we can legally do for our teachers, for our anybody, our support staff, whether or not it's a janitor or the principal, everybody on the district level that falls in between. Um, some of it's more equitable than others, but the important thing is that everybody has to do what is legally correct. So thank you for going the extra mile. Thank you, Ms. Doss. And I think what Ms. Doss is referring to is, is when we had a, a federal, uh, basically a federal order to provide leave for personnel that uh, had COVID or, or were quarantined due to COVID. Well, or maybe even it's, didn't have COVID but had been at the wrong place at the wrong time. And were quarantined, and, yes. Yeah. Um, that expired on December 31st. And so after that, we began looking for ways that we could help our employees because uh, and I know that, and you might hear that some districts may be extended that leave locally, but Lynn, that's, that was not illegally in, in your opinion. Well, see, journey. one thing is everybody signed a contract to do a certain job for a certain pay with certain benefits. And to, unless you have something like what we had from the federal government saying, and you shall, you must, and you shall then, if somebody has to be out, get these extra days. That's not equitable to other people. We dealt with it last year. I mean, we had, I mean, I just happen to know of these incidences. We had an employee who is like battling cancer. She came to school, and if you saw her getting out of her car, you wondered how she was putting one foot in front of the other. But she had cancer. But the government didn't say if you have cancer, you get extra days. So, we weren't legally entitled to give her any extra days. Uh, if you had COVID or you were in a COVID quarantine requirement prior to December 31st, 2020, you got extra days because the federal government said you got extra days. And that stopped January 1st. If we've had people that maybe have to be out, use their exceed well, they have to, now there's no dates, so if they're out, they have to use the days. If at some point in time the current administration says, poof, extra days, then we'll have, we will go back and we will 
refeed their payment. That's what Ms. Wynn and her staff do. And we'll make sure they're covered. But right now we don't have that option because that's not been given to us. And for us to take that on as a board is a potential gratuities loss question. Oh, it's a gratuities loss question. It's unfortunately, I'm treating Mr. Bearden one way, but I'm treating Mr. Cole a different way. Mr. Bearden has COVID, and here I'm going to give you extra days, but Mr. Cole breaks his leg, and no, I'm not giving you extra days. All right. Okay. So this method of just awarding a bonus, a retention bonus, for those folks who are here with us now, who are coming back next year, is equitable because we're offering it, it to all of our personnel. It is first totally legal and second equitable. So it's going to help employees in any number of ways. If they if they have worked and been here every day, then we're certainly expressing appreciation for that. If they have used days, and, and you know, the extra money will certainly help them in their situation with that. So the, the bottom line is it treats everybody equally. Yes, sir. Okay. So, or do you have any questions for Ms. Doss or Ms. Wynn? Uh, and I'll go back to Ms. Rigdon. You've also submitted an application to the state to utilize these federal funds in this manner, and that application has been approved. That is correct. May I have a comment? Yes, sir. You stirred up the thoughts of me when I had an open house at the beginning of school. As I look back, there wasn't a single discouraging word. There wasn't a teacher that complained. They all were willing. And to this day, I have not had any negative phone calls making demands or being disgruntled with uh, certain circumstances. They just served willingly and beautifully. I think it's very good. Thank you, Mr. Woods. Are there any other questions or comments? Ms. Doss or Ms. Wing has also worked on this and, and Ms. Regan has also worked on this. Okay, with that, I'm going to actually, because on the last item, Mr. Galloway's wife is an employee of the district, but that money comes from the governor, so you're eligible to vote on that one. However, because she is an employee, I'm going to, at this time, defer to our vice chair. I'm going to ask Mr. Bramlett. Uh, Mr. Bramlett, I recommend that we pass this provision as presented. May the chair have a motion to that effect? So moved. We have a motion. To that effect. We have a motion. Is there a second? Mr. Bearden. Yeah. A motion to second. Any discussion? Yeah. All those in favor? I'm going to abstain. So the motion was. Lewis made a motion, and I seconded it. I'm abstaining, Chief. Have yeah, one abstention? Yes. So it passes. It passes. Motion carries. 4 0 1. Okay. All right. Thank you. So let's go ahead and move on then. The next item on the agenda is public comment number 12. And we're going to go to Mr. Banner. The floor is yours, Mr. Banner. All right, Bob, we have two sides of the public comment. The first is Kennedy. Okay. Okay, we're going to ask Mr. Ensley to initiate a five minute timer on public comment. Mr. Banner, did you review the public comment guidelines with Ms. Rowe? Yes, sir. Okay. okay. All right. Welcome, Mr. Rose. The floor is yours. First of all, I want to say thank you for the opportunity to talk. Five minutes goes fast. I appreciate, Mr. Gladney, that you shared that we couldn't have made it through this last year without the way our teachers and their staff have all performed this year. Um, I also want to say that I personally spoke with Mr. Ensley twice, hoping to avoid being here tonight. Um, it did not work. So I'm just going to read real fast here. Um, I understand that the CARES Act days did disappear in December, as was reiterated tonight by Ms. Doss. <clears throat> However, there are several other surrounding counties that have all managed to find a way to continue taking better care of their teachers. And I know that you feel like you haven't gotten any negative response. I'm going to tell you I am surrounded by several teachers through my just friendships, parents through my preschool program. They're getting frustrated, the ones that I have had conversations with, many, many of them. Um, they don't feel like, some of them, that they're getting the support that they should. Um, 
And obviously, I can't speak for all of them. One of the questions Mr. Inslee asked when I was speaking to him about my concerns for our teachers was, have I taken a survey of the over 400 people? No, I have not. Um, but I think that's something you probably could do and should do um, if it were anonymous, and you might get some responses maybe you'll be surprised by. It. I don't know. I do know that when I call to check on every other county, Cherokee, Pickens, Stevens, Union, Gilmer, they all are still extending those days out to their teachers at least through the end of March, if not through the end of the school year. When I shared that with Mr. Inslee, his first response was not, oh, I wonder how they're doing that. Maybe I should give them a call. Without a hesitation of breath, he was like, no, legally, we just can't do it, can't do it. And that to me shared, one, what his priority was and what it is not. And that is disappointing to me because our teachers are on the front line. Another thing Mr. Ensley shared, who I don't know personally, this isn't a personal attack on anybody, it's just very frustrating. Um, another thing that he shared was that, um, you know, he was very proud that we've kept our doors open this year when other counties haven't. And that is commendable, but that's something we do every single year. And yes, there were probably more expenses. And I know for, at least on a couple instances, we could use with some extra janitors to help with all the extra maintenance and cleaning. But we're not willing, my understanding is to pay more than $11 an hour. When this board has received a substantial raise, I believe like 150%, Mr. Guatney's salary in just the, since what, 2017 or 2018, has jumped 35%. Other raises, all in administration, but the teachers who are in the classrooms every day get a very minimal raise and then they're expected to take their own personal time off when they have to quarantine. Because in the minimal sense, elementary school teachers are subjecting themselves to being exposed to different 20 times a day in their class. Middle school, high school, over 120 possibilities of being exposed every single day. I have a teacher, I couldn't charge her tuition for a whole month. I couldn't bring myself to do it because I knew she had just had to take an entire month off with no pay between her having to be exposed and her child, or quarantine, and then her child. I'm a small business, I'm a widow, I'm a single parent putting a child through law school, but I personally found a way to take better care of that teacher than you guys have, and that is disappointing to me. Um, I, I know I'm going to run out of time when we start talking about the way that you neglected to supply the classrooms with the essential needs that they needed to have but we've spent $85,000 of CARES Act money on 10 floor cleaners. And I understand that maybe that's something you need, but in the meantime, it's our teachers who are, I mean, we could buy air purifiers for every single classroom in the county, like Polk County did, but we didn't. And right now, you have teachers that buy supplies for kids that are not gonna bring them to school. They have snacks in their class for kids to make sure that they're fed. And now this year, they also got to add buying supplies to keep their classrooms safe and healthy because you are not sharing that burden with them. More than 85% of teachers do not recommend it as a profession. More teachers leave this profession in the first five years than ever have before, and we have a crisis coming. That's why tonight you're having to offer bonuses to get people to stay, because it's difficult. And it's easy to give what doesn't belong to you, but you've kept this district open on the backs of our teachers. They have had to, um, just be more generous in their time, their talents, their money, I'm out of time. But it's been on their backs and they paid for it literally. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Day? state. We're not hardly done yet. We're going to have comments later on. Okay? All right. Uh, howdy. Uh, my name is Charles Fish. Uh, I'm here with the uh, chairman of the SCR, Southern Confederate Republic. I spoke a couple months ago uh, just talking a little bit about the group. Uh, <coughs> anyway, uh, we were approached by uh, a couple people that uh, uh, felt led strongly to uh, start a, a new homeless shelter in Fannin County. And uh, 
the building, the very strong pro uh, prospect that they have right now that's not approved yet, but is old uh, mortgage and elementary school waiting. It's already been retrofitted uh, for some uh, missionaries, possible missionaries at the time. But they would need some funding, so uh, we got thinking about it, and uh, we we uh, we thought of uh, uh, sponsoring and hosting a heritage festival. It's a Southern Heritage Festival. It'll be at Horseshoe Bend Park, June 18th, 19th, and 20th, which is also Father's Day weekend. Uh, basically, the theme is just us, uh, our way of life, Southern living, uh, be free to enter, uh, open to the public, visitors, local people, however. But uh, uh, ultimately, the goal uh, between vendor spaces, uh, uh, people selling food or anything southern, artsy, crafts type, type things. But anyway, uh, we we're thinking of some guest speakers and the whole idea of coming here, not only information that, that we're doing that, but also um, to ask if, uh, if you guys would be interested or, or possibly have some ideas about uh, uh, history of Fannie County education. Because not only is it a Southern Heritage thing, it's, it's a, a Fannie County thing too. It's, it's a local thing, and uh, we're promoting us, our way of life, and education, local education here, uh, uh, is a very strong aspect, and right? it changed us in our lives growing up, and what have you, but uh, uh, if we can have a team of uh, possible teachers, students, or however, maybe you guys, how you see fit, it's just some ideas there to, uh, to uh, and be interested to see the history of education at Fannie County, and things of that nature, but we have uh, some living histories uh, that's being uh, planned up between some uh, Native American groups and uh, also some other history groups and some uh, veteran things. Uh, the DAV had a meeting last night. I, I haven't had word. Uh, uh, they may do a presentation there as well. Uh, just trying to get some things up. Uh, a couple other people is going to be speaking of some history aspects of our, of our county. There's going to be a lot of games there for kids, uh, tug of war, uh, three-legged races, say the same race and stuff. You know, I love bobbing for apples, but I'm not, not sure how that'll work. But, uh, either way, we already had the park, the whole park's already donated by the county. Uh, they waived the fee for that. It's 100% of any money raised through donations. Vendor fees and uh, percentage of their sales is going for this homeless shelter uh, that's coming to Fannie. The other prospect they said, uh, which they have their meeting coming up next week, and I'll be going there, so I will have all the logistics for that. But uh, Camp Oregon, uh, they have some property set aside out there, that, uh, and they're also affiliated a little bit with the uh, Georgia Baptist Association as well. So uh, it's it's a need that's happening in our county that's growing, and uh, I believe it's worth trying to do what we can to help help that. And uh, they're going to handle all those other logistics. We're just going to help with the initial construction and retrofitting and stuff with the building there, uh, some funding with that. And at the same time, we have to have some good family, clean, wholesome fun like like we did when we were kids. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if, if there's something that you guys can help with that or, uh, or anything. But also, on another note, uh, I just want to have this on record that uh, we are willing to try to help raise money for something that uh, teachers may need or students may need or any of those supplies or whatever. Uh, just contact me if you have any questions. Maybe we can get together and, and come up with something that can help with that. We, we're we here to help the community and that's what we want to do and that's where our heart's at. And I, I appreciate this time, appreciate all what you guys have done and continue to do. Thank you, Mr. Fish. Next item on the agenda is facilities update number 13. Mr. Danner. Thank you, Dr. Watson. Good afternoon, we're even more. Uh, a couple of pictures there, some facility updates. Uh, Blue Ridge Elementary, uh, notice that's the, the pavement that was actually finally uh, completed from the water line that was replaced there. And uh, 
so we can have to take some time for our contractors to get there. Uh, that is the new greenhouse that uh, uh, has been purchased with SPLOS money. Uh, Blue Ridge was given a lot more money and they decided to, uh, to purchase a greenhouse going to replace the aquaponics, which is aging very much. Um, this is at East Fannin. First off, notice that's the outdoor classroom there at East Fannin. Notice all the trees down. Uh, but the, the picture is actually that little pole, that little white square, uh, that is down in between the, uh, the outdoor classroom. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Finsley. The next picture there, that is at the corner of the gym looking down that area. Again, notice that tree. We'll to come back to that in just a minute. And then that is a wireless access point connected to the gym. So all that has been completed there. That was a request from Mr. Price to, to get Wi-Fi down to the outdoor classroom. Uh, going back to just looking at those pictures again, uh, those trees and everything, that was from our storm. Uh, that was actually completed today. So again, all that's been cleaned up. Uh, so again, I couldn't get you pictures on that. Uh, Lieutenant Couch at the high school, of course, that's in front of the new gymnasium. Uh, we have issues of people parking there during basketball games and during school hours and everything else. So again, uh, per Lieutenant Couch's request, we've got that marked very clearly now that it's a no parking fire lane zone and uh, to help with that. And, uh, uh, so again, you know, a lot of things going on that uh, uh, it's very difficult to go around and take pictures and keep up with everything. But again, that's the highlights there for the past month. Okay, thank you. The next item is construction updates. Construction updates, again, just more pictures. Uh, Again, the trees are being cut, uh, uh, getting logged there at the property. Uh, that's pretty much going to be at the entrance going to the transportation facility. And uh, I actually went by today. All those trees to the, to the left of the picture, uh, they're not there anymore. So, uh, so again, there, there's been a lot of cleaning up there. They're actually at the, uh, the buffer zone there with the little branches. So again, that's where they're working around. They'll be on the flip side of it. Uh, hopefully early next week to start on the staff development side of being collecting trees or clearing trees. Okay, any questions about the construction update? Glad to see the progress out there. The next item on the agenda is to approve the mowing bids number 15, Mr. Dana. Uh, it's that time of year again. Uh, so last month we sent out to uh, to bid our, our mowing services, that one right there, Mr. Uh, Inslee. Uh, again, this is our standard invitation bid. Uh, it's got all five schools and also the Ag facility on there. Uh, the, the bid opening was this Tuesday at 10 a.m. And um, <laughs> uh, Going to open up the other one there, Mr. Jensen, the spreadsheet. We had uh, two, two vendors come to our, uh, that wanted to go around and look at the, the properties. Uh, that was Trey Hasty and then also Tim Stein, the U.S. Lawns. They did come to our pre meeting. Uh, Mr. Sparling took them around, showed them all the campuses. Uh, at the bid opening Tuesday, we actually had two bids uh, submitted. Uh, one was Pro Turf Landscape. Uh, and the second was U.S. Lawns, and uh, you can see the pricing of the top numbers highlighted in yellow. Uh, that was low bid, uh, and it was low bid except for East Fannin. East Fannin and uh, between U.S. Lawns and Pro Turf were exactly the same. So again, we followed our rubric, and uh, uh, based on the rubric, Pro Turf was the, uh, the one that scored the highest. Mr. Hensley, so now you can go back to uh, the memo. And this is the same price that was for last year. So again, given that uh, the invitation of bids and the low low bid, I would like to recommend Pro Turf for landscape maintenance for, for this school year's long contract. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bennett. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'll make that recommendation as presented. Can the chair have a motion for our moment, please? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Do we have any that are against? Okay, we've got one against and four for ten. Okay, 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bever. Ms. Wynn? Item 16 is to approve the district financial report. Yes, sir. This report is for January 31st, 2021. We are at 58.31% of our fiscal year complete, and our local revenue was 90.26% versus 88.73% from the prior year. Our total revenues were at 77.31% versus 75.22% from the prior year, and our total expenditures are at 51.54% versus 54.45% from the prior year. That presents our financial statement. Okay, I'll make a recommendation to approve as presented, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, how that much? So I have second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, thank you. Next item is SPLOST, number 17. Ms. Wynn? Yes, sir. Our SPLOST collection was $612,090 that we received from our January of 2021. And that is 32.5% growth from the prior January. Even though that is lower than what we have gotten in the last few months, that's still a good collection for January. Okay, that's presented for information, so there's no need to, to move on this agenda item. So we'll go on to the next is to, thank, thank you, Ms. Wynn, is to approve school nutrition property assemblies for grade 10. Ms. Sisson, good evening. Good evening, board. We have a warmer that's been at West Hammond Elementary School for several years, and it is uh, no longer in service, and it has met its life expectancy, and I would ask that you approve to salvage this. Okay, any questions about this recommendation on here? Okay, Mr. Chair, may I have a recommendation? Yeah, can you chair a motion to salvage this? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, thank you. Did you have the notation? I got it. Yeah, she's yes, taking notes you. also while she's <laughs> presenting. So very efficient. We appreciate that. All right, and so number 19 is to approve the summer meal contract with the Fannie County Recreation Department. So you may recall last month we had a related agenda item that was approved by the board, and so you prepared and worked with uh, Ms. Doss and county government to, to bring the contract to us. So we'll speak to this. Yes, and last month, as Dr. Watney indicated, we did approve the intergovernmental agreement. This agreement um, to furnish meals through the summer food service program basically spells out the cost of the reimbursements for each meal, the dates that we will be in service, and um, it does say in the second amendment um, on the second page that the school nutrition school system the Fannie County School System School Nutrition Program will have the food service permit issued under the school system name to operate in the Fannie County Rec Department's concession stand. So I would ask that um, you consider approving this. And this contract's been gone over by Ms. Dawes. Do you have any additional feedback? Mr. Chair, make the recommendation to approve as presented. Okay. I'll make that motion. Looking for a second. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sisson. Got everything? All right. I know number 20 is local board training update. Uh, we're going to go to Mr. Inslee. Give us an update on this, Mr. Inslee. Thank you, Dr. Watney. Uh, good evening. Good afternoon, board. Um, we are in the basically uh, still looking for our exemplary status and one of the things that we need to do is have our uh, external review and I know that is generally our chairman and, and one other uh, board member and if 
Mr. Chairman, if we could possibly look at um, it's Tuesday, March 30th, that was March 30th, maybe it's 4.30 if that's okay with you, and then uh, if you'll just let me know a couple of community members that you'd like, be glad to reach out to them and we'll get that set up if that's okay. Be great. Um, and then we do have one more retreat that we're excited about having, which is initiating the, the technology plan that we have, uh, and also looking at our facilities. And so uh, Ms. Finley and Mr. Banner will uh, be helping us with that. We also, or I, also I spoke to uh, Justin O from Pioneer Risa this week. Uh, he said for us to work around our schedule and he would be able to work with us through that. Uh, so if you would like, uh, we can do that on a board meeting day or we can do that on a regular day. It's y'all's choice. So whichever way you want to do it is fine with me. I can set it up. Just let me know which way you want to go and we can look at some dates that way. Do you need us to decide that? Uh, if we could, that'd be great. Uh, but I, I've got some, some possible dates uh, if y'all want to look at your calendar. Uh, we have, I was thinking that after spring break, my goal is to submit everything prior to teachers and everyone going home for the holidays. Uh, if you look at, we did get information from GSBA this week, uh, which says that on August the 2nd, it has to be submitted by 5 o'clock, but, you know, I like to get it in early. Uh, and so if we can have one more retreat, have our external review, then we should be uh, good to go with all of our documentation. Uh, we have actually updated our, our website. We got the, the seal uh, this week about uh, being an exemplary board 2020, so we've updated that on our website as well. But I, I think Tuesdays and Thursdays sometimes are better for you guys, and so I was looking at maybe uh, April 13th, April 20th, April 22nd, April 27th, April 29th, any of those dates. Uh, but again, I want you guys to just look, if you want to look at your calendar and you just get back with me, that'll be fine as well. If y'all want to decide or not, that'd be great too. But we will be going to multiple schools like we did the last time, uh, having our retreat. Uh, and uh, I know one of the requests is to see the loop, um, which is the, the information for the, the new clue thing uh, in the gym at West Ham. I'll, I'll ask each board member here, do we need to wait or are gyms okay with taking a day? You pick it, I'll be there. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> do you want it on a board meeting day or do you want it a regular day? Uh, Thursdays are better, so let's eliminate the Tuesdays. Okay. So if we can pick a day on one of those days that you give us on Thursday. You what about the 20th or the 27th of both Thursdays? And that's in April? That's in April, yes, yes. So the 22nd or the? No, the 20th or the 27th. Those are Tuesdays. Oh, those are Tuesdays. I'm sorry. Thursdays is the 22nd and the 27th. 22nd, 29th. 22nd, 29th. <laughs> I can't read my writing, sorry. 22nd is a Tuesday. And the 20th is a Thursday. I need to get my phone out instead. Uh, the 20th is a Thursday and the 27th is a Thursday. Is that correct? No, those, those are Tuesdays. Tuesdays. Those are Tuesdays. Yes. Let's go to the other. Alright. We got the So 20. we got the 22nd or the 29th. How's that? That's a lot better. There you go. <laughs> so either one. I'm like Mr. Cove, you may and I'll be. Mrs. Rigdon said we have testing on the 29th. Whatever y'all choose. Let's take it. 22nd sounds like 22nd. It sounds like a winner, sir. All right, we'll get it set up for April the 22nd, which is a Thursday. And that doesn't require any more action, so we'll just we'll make note of that. And uh, as we get a little bit closer and set up, we'll certainly invite the media to welcome you along with it. That's the 22nd. Hey. Yes, sir. Okay. Is that okay? All right, we'll get it set up and we'll get your agenda out. Of course, our media will be invited as well to join us at any time throughout the day. Uh, look great. Look forward to seeing all the great things that's going on out there in our schools. Thank you. This is an in-school. This is an in-school all-day visit. Yes, sir. We'll start at the beginning in the morning and probably finish usually around 2, 2.30 is when we usually finish. It's a six-hour train.
Any else on that? Okay, the next item is number 21 to approve to postpone the April 2021 Board of Education meeting. I'm going to bring Mr. Danner up to the front. Uh, Mr. Inslee, if you'll advance to number 20. Uh, yes, sir. The, uh, this year's calendar, um, uh, spring break, board meeting fell on spring break. So uh, um, I would like to ask to postpone the board meeting, which is on the second Tuesday, which would be April the 8th. Move it to the third, I'm sorry, Thursday. Yes, move it to the third Thursday for that one time uh, because it does follow spring break this year. Uh, so again, I think that would be a highly, uh, I think a lot of people who would be at the board meeting during spring break would really greatly appreciate that, which is our team. And, uh, uh, so again, I'd like to make that recommendation. Okay, so this is not a cancellation. This is just basically a postponement of the meeting by one week. And so that would apply next month. Mr. Chair, make that recommendation. Can the chair have that motion? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Ms. Finley is booking her flight right now. So. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Danner. Okay, uh, the next item is number 22. This is personnel. I'll defer to the chair as to whether there's a need for executive session. Mr. Cohen. Good. Mr. DeVries. Do you need an executive session? Fresh, I do not. We're good, sir. Okay, thank you. So I'll give you a moment to turn your personnel sheet to the sheet dated March 11, 2021. Looks like everybody is there. So we'll look at resignations first in the resignations column. Deborah Meisner, effective date 2-22-2021. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. Chair, have that motion. So, so second. second. All in favor? Thank you. Next resignation is Jimmy Butler, effective date 3 5 2021. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. I'll make that motion. I have a second. Okay. All in favor? Okay. The next two we can take together. They're both resignations, effective dates of March 12, 2021. And it is Candy S. Burgess and Deborah Cantrell. Make that recommendation for both, Mr. Chair. Chair, have that motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay, and the next resignations we can take together as all have an effective date of 5-26-2021. And these are Kimberly Patterson, Teresa Tate, Nancy Watkins, and Mike Weaver. Make those recommendations, Mr. Chair, together. The chair, have that motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay, thank you. I have one recommendation, and this is Sarah Rigdon as an administrator. Make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. Chair, have that motion. So moved. Second. Third. Third. Fourth. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. And I'll come back to that one in just a moment. Uh, recommendations for substitute teacher. These are all pending completion of paperwork, background check, and certification. Kristen Franklin, Aaron Golden, and Connie Whitaker. We can take those together and make that recommendation, Mr. Chair. Chair, have that motion. So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. All right, that takes us then to the next agenda item, which is superintendent's comments. And um, before I begin, I just want to where is he, Mr. Knuckles? This could potentially be Mr. Knuckles' last regular meeting. And uh, I just want to say thank you, Mr. Knuckles. Thank you. We'll give him a round of applause. <laughs> So ladies and gentlemen, I, and I apologize if my comments are a bit long, but today's, a, today's it's kind of an anniversary of sorts, because it's exactly one year ago in March of 2020, the effects of COVID here in Fayette County were just beginning. One year ago tomorrow would unknowingly become the last day of the regular school year in Fayette County during 2020, as regular school canceled and we went 100% virtual. It has been said that necessity is the mother of invention. And the FCSS team came together in an incredible way. Fortunately, our curriculum and technology departments had already started the cold model, which set the stage for a flipped classroom. Those departments teamed with the schools and made virtual opportunities a reality within a very short period of time. Our nutrition and transportation teams joined forces to keep feeding students by delivering meals. 
The student services team worked hard to make sure every student was properly accounted for and special services continued to help as much as possible during a pandemic lockdown. And even though we finished the school year virtually, every employee in the school district was working. We ended the year on time and with an in-person graduation for our class of 2020. Preparing for this school year was complicated. The curriculum department had to set up a second school that was online that accepted approximately 15% of our students. We did start on time last August with the calendar that we approved for last school year, and we had both online and in-person options for our students. With the significant state budget cuts that were announced a year ago, I was thankful to be here in Fannin County with a healthy fund reserve that allowed us to avoid furloughs, we avoided pay cuts, and other measures that would have affected our students and our personnel. A strong finance department, talented assistant superintendents, district leaders and principals that are good at remaining within their budgets made this possible without the need for other drastic measures this year. My team and I met with public health officials, Mr. Ruth will remember that, attorneys and others to set the guidelines that remain in place to this day. And now, almost exactly one year later, we are offering our personnel the opportunity to be vaccinated if they choose to do so tomorrow. We are three quarters finished with this school year and our schools and students have been successful thus far. We have even been able to allow extracurricular opportunities through programs which have had incredible success this year, including football, cross country, band, academic team, mock trial, girls basketball, and of course, our state championship wrestling team with a state championship wrestler. All of this in the middle of a pandemic. And all of this would not have happened without every single employee of the Fannin County School System. I have incredible respect for how this board is recognizing them with their words and their actions this evening. The financial incentives announced this evening that will be funded with federal money will make a difference for them, those teachers, those personnel, those staff members, as they have made a difference for our children and this community. Finally, back to my personnel recommendation. Betsy's last meeting was a year ago, and there has not been a formal second in command since that time. So I'd like to congratulate the new deputy superintendent, Sarah Rigby. And I will end with a letter that I wrote on the open last spring that I wrote to the community on March 27th of 2020. And I'm going to take the, the middle paragraph of this letter that I wrote. This is what I said back in March 27th of 2020. And you know, if you stop and think about it, it it's just as true today. In the meantime, as we live one day at a time, it is important to find the bright spots and goodness in all of this. For example, the ideals of faith, hope, and love have come to the forefront as people have pulled together and focused on helping our children and each other. This crisis has proven to be a strong reminder of why this school system exists, to serve our students. I am proud of what has been accomplished by both our faculty and the staff, as well as the community, to support the children of Fannin County. For we are blessed. And I'm thankful for you. Having volunteers. <coughs> I'll go. All right, start with you, Mike. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody that's here and everybody who's watching by way of whatever. Uh, I'd like to encourage all of our employees to get their shots. I've had both of mine, I'm still in. I had a few complications on the second one, but I made it through. Uh, also, I'd like to uh, thank Mr. Bell for the update for Blue Ridge too. Uh, thank you, Mr. Knuckles, for the opening prayer. And again, I wish we weren't leaving, uh, letting you leave, but there's nothing we can do to hold you here, but I wish you the best. You're a great person, you're an example, and everybody's on mission. Uh, thank Mr. Ruth for his presentation. 
Uh, I'd like to say praise God for our employees. They do a tremendous job for our children. And the money they're going to get, to me, is just a drop in the bucket of what they deserve. Uh, I'd like to thank all the schools for our uh, presents, uh, the cake. I don't know about eating all that cake, but I might share it with some. And congratulations to all of our athletes. They've done a tremendous job, like Mr. Guadney said. In this pandemic, they were superb. Uh, and that's about it. Just glad to be here, be part of this organization, part of this board. Mr. Cole. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty excited, pretty uh, energized over uh, how well our school's been blessed. I mean, it's, uh, it's been tremendous. Uh, we're reminiscing over some uh, opportunities to be uh, in the school uh, last year, um, you know, seeking guidance and just watching how uh, this thing has exploded during the pandemic that our athletes, uh, I don't know if it energized them, I'm uh, really not sure, but uh, to see what they have done, see how far CTAE has come, just that thing is exploding and there's so much excitement uh, on uh, what I call vocational and uh, because uh, I am a business owner that uh, deals in that area uh, that excites me. I had a businessman uh, in my office today um, that is excited to see what the school system is doing to promote that because he needs those type of workers in, in, in his industry. So, I, I mean, I'm just, I'm just uh, so at all of what's actually going on on the inside. And I'm trying to uh, be uh, wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove, <laughs> because um, we love our teachers. And there's a, there's a word there that we use, retention, that we could really throw that out. But uh, I'm very good friends with teachers in Stevens County, Carnival, Harville, uh, Gilmer, Pickens. Uh, Chad, you work there. So we know how well we take care of our teachers and how much we love them. So I just want to go on record for that, that we do uh, take care of them. Uh, so uh, I haven't come by my place quite often, and uh, you know I'm always there. Uh, I've had I see faces in here that call me, and I call you back. So uh, you know if you're out there, and you have a problem. I, I have an open door policy. Just give me a call. Walk in on my business. We'll have a talk. I want to pray for, uh, ask you to remember uh, Dr. Hodges and her family and, and pray for them. And uh, they do such an awesome job over there at Blue Ridge. I hate to see Miss Tate go because I just love her to death. She's been, I mean, she just rocked me one day and we, we have grown such a uh, great relationship and I'm going to miss her. I'm going to miss her tremendously. So, uh, but we have that fiber on the speed dial here, so I'm, I'm going to stay in contact with her. Uh, also, want to uh, recognize Miss Rhonda Anderson for her uh, uh, second chance breakfast video she did. If you haven't seen that, take a look at it. Rhonda is a great lady. Great uh, does great work. I'm very proud of her, and I just want to say that uh, publicly. And so, uh, I, I just can't say enough for uh, our school system and, and what they do. Uh, I'm excited, and uh, I 
think we're very, very blessed. Congratulations, Miss Sarah. And uh, it's yours. Mr. Lewis. Speaker says it's not a hard act to follow. I won't say anything except I'll give Bobby a big ditto and Mike a big ditto. Mr. Brown. First and foremost, it's an honor to be part of this team. Um, this has been a challenging year. And you have risen to the challenge. You've met it head on and you've succeeded. Sometimes I have the opportunity to walk around the area where I live and I marvel at, at the qualities of our ancestors who came into this area and hollowed out a living and endured hardships that we don't know anything about. But they persevered and they survived and, and, and they were successful. And I see that same spirit in our, in our employees, our teachers, our administrators. This is a wonderful place to live. Fannin County is blessed. I'm very pleased that we're able to offer um, the financial um, help for, our, for all of our employees. It's an exciting thing for me and I'm glad that we're in a position that we can, can further that. Um, thank you. Thank you for stepping up to the plate, doing your job and doing it well. Say thank you for everyone that showed up and everyone that is watching. Uh, I want to thank all the schools for the wonderful gifts up here. I do appreciate them. Um, I want to say I'm very thankful to be on this board, like Mr. Bramlett said, working through all of the hard times that we've had this year. And I agree with Mr. Cole. I, we love our teachers. Uh, we, it's hard for me to sit here and not be able to vote for something that I strongly want to give y'all. If we could do more, we would love to do more, but finances limit a lot of things. As Mr. Rodney said, if we wasn't in the shape we was in, there had been a lot of cuts this year. And I don't think that would have went over too well in the community. I think that, uh, that y'all need to be commended and this board also for, for being strongly financial and being conscious about it. So, uh, I said it is a great honor to sit on this board and I, and I do appreciate the gifts. And I don't want to leave without saying congratulations there. So, and Mr. Knuckles, uh, once again, thank you for everything. Sir, I consider you a friend. And I'm on count on you to come back around and visit all the time, so I hold you to it. And with that, uh, say go Rebels. We're, we're doing wonderful, so, I mean, uh, everywhere from athletes to, to mock trial, to uh, King. I never remember a year in my history or in the school's history that we've had such success. And it's incredible. So and that's that's to be commended to y'all and all y'all's efforts. So thank you. And with that, I'm done. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I move. Second. All in favor. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if I may have one more photograph of sure. if the Board of Education can please come. The front of the lineup, and I'm going to ask if Mr. Danner no. come to the stage, please. Mr. Ainsley, come to the stage, please. Ms. Rigdon, come to the okay. stage, please. There'll be one more photo. Right? Okay. Uh-huh.